guys, welcome to Garage Daily. I'm Luke, and this is the cheapest CLK V8 that you could buy in Australia. Let me show you around. I've done a bit of a carbon wrap. Consoles and trim were all wood grain, and it was very dated with the wood grain, so I did a carbon wrap, which I think looks pretty cool. A climate control, six stack CD player in the glove box. It had navigation, it had TV, it had telephone, normal radio obviously, normal CD, climate control, ESP, cruise control, full electric windows, electric sunroof, front and rear sensors, which is pretty cool. I added the uh, clear boot light, LED boot light, and I added the carbon spoiler, which I had custom made from a guy overseas. He done a really cool job. Car came on 18 inch alloys with some Michelin Pilot Sport tires, which were really good. They were silver, but the clear coat was all coming off, so I decided to paint them black. And I like the silver and black, I thought that looked really cool. Seatbelt retractor, help you put your seatbelt on. Another little cool little feature when the windows go up. So after months of shopping for a car, I wanted something different. I wanted something fast or fun. I was looking, I was searching for Porsche Boxsters, I was searching for 350Zs, and I came, kept looking at you know, marketplace, car sales, all those places, eBay, and I come across this ad for a V8 CLK Mercedes for $6,000. Now, I was, I was a bit surprised, and you know, a little, little bit put off as well, obviously, the price was, you know, too good to be true. Um, it was from a car dealership, and it was as traded, so obviously the, the car dealer didn't want to spend money on the car, so I knew the car was going to have some problems, so alarm bells are ringing. Anyway, I got there, had my partner with me, so she could drive the car, like, you know, my old car back. Um, and I could drive the new car back if I, if I did buy it. I had the money ready to go, just in case. I first get there and the car's waiting out the front for me. I'm like, great, awesome. Okay, I can have a look at this thing before you know the dealers come out and jump all over you. Um, I had messaged the dealer first, telling him, you know, letting him know that I was gonna come by and have a look at this thing. He gave me the address and everything, obviously. Um, anyway, I'm looking over the car. It's filthy, absolutely filthy. It's covered in so much dirt. Their headlights were like orange, pretty much. They um, had so much sun fade. They looked disgusting. I'll add, a, I'll add a photo. I popped open the bonnet. There's oil everywhere, all over the sides of the engine. Um, it looked just really neglected. Now this was a $140,000 to $160,000 car, new when it was here in Australia with all the options. This is the Elegance model, top of the range. Um, anyway, I started to have a closer look and to me it looked like, okay, rocket cover gaskets, they're leaking. I might be able to get away with tightening them up or just replace them. Um, then I went in, spoke to the car dealer, asked him for the, asked him for the key so I could start it up and take it for test drive and everything. Anyway, nicest guy in the world, as you know, all car dealers are. He was already helping another customer on a, um, a Jeep Wrangler, so I figured I, I got some more time to, you know, have a better look at this car, um, not get pressured into buying it. All the all the typical things that you normally put up with. The he gave me the keys. I jumped in the car. As soon as I started it. It was a serious vibration, like I'm talking really bad vibration. The whole car was just crazy. I'm thinking, oh God, this thing's screwed. Anyway, put it in reverse, the sound went away. Just 
completely went away. It's like, okay, put the car in a drive, vibration came back. Not, not so bad, but just, it was still there. As soon as you started accelerating, vibration was gone, it was fine. So I'm like, all right, yep, engine mounts are gone. Um, I got my light down the side of the engine, had a look. So much oil and stuff everywhere. Couldn't really tell just by looking at the engine mounts that they were gone. Um, you needed to sort of be under the car to see how much the engine had actually dropped, but I was pretty certain engine mount. Uh, did the old trick, brake accelerate, reverse, drive, listen to it, you could tell it was it was definitely stuffed. Engine sounded beautiful though, like it was running healthy, running running smooth and like obviously it wasn't vibrating in its place, but it was running smooth. Anyway, I still went for a test drive. Pulled out of the driveway, vibration was terrible. Um, the car dealer had actually told me, take as long as I want, like, go nuts, have fun, take the car for a proper test drive, make sure I'm happy with it. So I did. Took it out the back of this industrial area. Uh, of course, I had to put, sink the boot into it, just to you know, make sure that shifts shifts beautiful and the engine was good. I was blown away with like how fast this old 16 year old Mercedes was. This is a stock standard car at the time. Um, he hadn't, well, apparently it had a tune, but there was no, no proof to back it up. There was nothing to back it up. So everything else was just stock as a rock to look at. Um, as soon as I put the boot into it, I had told myself I wanted the car. It's funny because it was only like a few minutes beforehand, I was like in my head, walk away, walk away. I was adding up the sums in my head. It was like engine mounts, okay, possibly gearbox mounts, rocket cover gaskets, you know, the headlights and stuff. Yeah, it's an easy job. I've done it plenty of times before. I had a detailing business. Uh, worked in the car game for a long time. Um, but as soon as I sunk the boot into it and I got thrown back into the seat, I was hooked. Um, I drove back to the dealership, drove parts to my partner who was waiting in the car, at the car park waiting for me. And I came over, quickly came over and told her, look, I'm gonna buy the car, I'm gonna try and do a deal. He was asking six grand, I've gone in, had a talk with him, he wasn't gonna budge on price, like, okay. At the time I had an old uh, 99 model CLK 320 Mercedes in silver as well, uh, just a V6 model, beautiful car, Grandpa spec, white sheepskin seat covers and everything. Amazing car to drive. I asked him, like, I wanted to keep the old car, but I needed to downsize. At the time I had a VXSS Commodore, I had a Jeep Wrangler, I had the old Mercedes. So I was like, would you be interested in a trade-in? Um, surprisingly, the dealer turned around and said yes. He, he was definitely interested. He liked Mercedes, liked old Mercedes. So he came over and he had a look at it didn't even drive it and I said to him you know like what's what's the best trade-in you can give me on this car anyway he hits back straight away like two grand anyway I, I, it was a cheap car for me I paid like four grand um, that was on road with everything I, I said to him would you meet me in the middle like three you know like three grand he was still very hesitant said no um, we ended up settling at two and a half two and a half grand trade which I was actually quite happy with um, me like obviously trading into a deal you'd have to worry about all the paperwork and all the crap basically it's tying your car away and it's gone you don't have to worry about you know handing plates into transport and stuff anyway it's like okay we'll trade I'll do I'll do a trade pay the rest cash left me with more money in my pocket to work obviously fix on the little, little problems with the car had to go to my partner, look, I've just traded in our car, it's gone, we're gonna be taking home the new car. So we had to take the uh, car seats and baby seats out and stuff out of the, the old one, transfer it into the new one. Anyway, we've jumped in the car, jumped in the new car. Had no rego, it was as is, but the dealer actually offered us his trade plate so we could drive the car home, instead of worrying about trying to get a tow, you know, tow truck and all that sort of stuff. We drove the car home, you could tell it needed a wheel alarm. This car had been neglected, but I'm guessing by its last owner, not the previous one beforehand, because it was only three years ago it had money spent on, you know, brand new expensive tires and just servicing receipts and stuff like that. And in the last three years it had just been like nothing. So probably a sales rep maybe. 
car wholesaler, something like that, had been driving the car around. Anyway, got the car home. I started work on it immediately. I already had another car at home. We had two other cars at home. We had my partner's car as well. So we were fine to get around. I'd gone and ordered new engine mounts, new gearbox mounts, uh, rocket cover gaskets, a whole heap of degreaser. I bought a whole heap of degreaser. I um, serviced it straight away, new oil. Uh, I'd ordered K and air filters. What else do we do right away? Um, just just cleaning supplies really gave the whole car like a full full clean real good scrub up interior was really dirty and obviously a smoker had been in it so it you know stunk a bit so we had the car all open really did a really good job cleaning it really did a good job cleaning it cleaning it up uh, the tint the rear tint on the uh, rear windscreen was extremely uh, bubbled and like a obstructing your view so I took the back tint off and that was amazing it actually just peeled off with the glue and all which never happens if you ask anyone that does a tint that's just very unheard of it's normally all the glue gets left I sanded back the headlights get all that yellow stain off and then we buffed them like coated them afterwards uh, the headlights came up really good A few weeks later, started getting all my parts arriving, like can and air filters, which I ended up doing a video on. Installed them, they were easy as. I opted to just drop my car off and say, hey, look, can you do my engine mounts and my gearbox mounts? Here's the parts, I just need you to labor. He quoted me a fixed price, and he didn't go over his fixed price. It was great, he did the job. He told me he never wanted to work on the car again, though, because it was really, really hard, even for them, with the hoist and everything, which I thought was a bit funny, but hey, they did the car, they didn't overcharge me, which was great. Uh, as soon as we started the car, the new engine mounts, new gearbox mounts, it was it was a different a different machine. It was just so quiet, so smooth. Driving it was just instantly beautiful. It was like a huge, huge difference. While the mechanic had the car, I got him just to look over a few other things, and he found like you know there's a leaking strut. There was a few little you know like bushes and stuff in the front end that needed replacing at some point. No, no rush. Uh, and the car needed a wheel alignment, that was it. So I figured I'd wait until I do those little things in the front end before I do a wheel alignment. In the end, we just did the wheel alignment anyway because it drove me a little bit crazy that the steering wheel was a bit off-center. I've had this car a year now and you wouldn't believe it, I've only done 3,000 Ks. 3,000 kilometers in this car since I've had it. I work very close to where I live, so wasn't much driving there. I wouldn't take this thing out for very long drives. It has it has done a few, but uh, I only sort of like visit friends up the coast and stuff like that. So you know, a few hours drive, nothing crazy. I'm seriously considering. I, I mean, I love this car, but I can't keep having you know multiple cars at one time, which I tend to keep doing. I'm seriously considering trading it in for something a bit older. Uh, I'd love to go to a classic, like an old Mustang or something like that, but they're shooting up in value, something fierce. So I'm actually looking at maybe a 944 Porsche in manual or a 924 Porsche Turbo, something along those lines. I'd love it to be manual. Since I've had the car, I have done the twin k and air filters upgrade. We have done a, removed the secondary cats some people argue that they're not secondary cats, they're just resonators or primary resonators. Um, my exhaust shop said they were secondary cats and hey, he took it off the price by keeping those secondary cats um, himself to bring the price down to get uh, an X-pipe made up. But we still kept the exhaust down the one side. They also got rid of the old you know, original tip. It's like a three inch exhaust all the way back from cat back. That was standard, almost three and a half, three inch. I'm not sure the exact measurement, but it basically comes up just under three inch pipe. He put on a new twin tip for me, which I think looks really cool. I'll show, I'll, I'll add a picture to the video. Always run it on 98 octane. It's like the best sort of fuel that we can get here without running E85 and having to change injectors and bits and pieces. See, I've done the carbon spoiler. I uh, done carbon 
wrap and the console and door trims and bits and pieces just sort of all fits in, get rid of the old wood grain, just really dates the car. Uh, it had the Xenon headlight upgrade which was quite an expensive upgrade and then I've added the LED uh, light upgrade for the park lights so then it matches, we've got white pretty much all around front. We've got LED boot light, performance wise the car was pretty surprising so 2004 model CLK 500 was putting out 306 horsepower, 460 newton meters of torque. Now that was pretty pretty cool, and there was a few different um, stats on the weight. Now I've seen charts saying this car weighs 1,399 kilos up to say 1,599 kilos, so still heaps lighter than a typical Commodore and you know the normal full size saloon cars here in Australia. Plus being a B8. But it wasn't any, there's like no steel, it's a full alloy V8, which I'd never even heard of before, but yeah, apparently it's like full, full alloy V8. It was compared by Wheels Magazine um, against our CV8 Monaros, which had an LS1 V8 in those, but they weighed a lot more. Pretty cool coupe though, they're a two door as well, so I guess that's why they compared them, they came out at the same time. Um, the Monaro had more power, but still the CLK beat it in like every stat possible, apart from the horsepower. But like 0 to 60, 0 to 100, quarter mile times, all of that, the CLK was faster. And surprisingly, pretty zippy in the cornering department. Uh, you look at the car, you think, you know, it wouldn't handle at all. I've thrown this thing around plenty of corners. The traction control system is really good if you do want to save your tyres. The exhaust note on this car, oh, it's fine-tuned, is, yeah, the exhaust note on this car is very fine-tuned, it's, it's something else. I've had plenty of V8s and this is definitely up there, it's probably my second favourite, had a classic V8, nothing beats that, but this is probably the, the best modern V8 that I've had, like fuel injected. <laughs> And yeah guys, thanks for watching, we'll catch you in the next video.